In this video we'll be looking at problem 14.12 on page 802. This is dealing with the infant crying and IQ score data from the first problem in this chapter. Undoubtedly my favorite problem in this whole book. If you have not um, entered in that data, go to the beginning of chapter 14 and enter in the data. As you recall, this problem dealt with um, popping babies on the foot with a rubber band and seeing how much they cried. A says the residuals for crying and IQ data appear in example 14.3 on page 785. So flipping back to page 785, you can see um, that they have calculated all of the residuals for the um, baby crying data. All right. I'm um, going to use my calculator to calculate those residuals and we'll take a look at them soon. Make a stem plot to display the distribution of the residuals. So once you um, do um, your regression, all right, the calculator stores the residuals in the list resid. So simply hit second stat and you see list, all right. So I'm going to um, first I'm going to look at a residual plot, all right. A residual plot is simply the um, a scatter plot where the X list is um, our X data and the Y list are the residuals. So in Y list I hit stat, pardon me, second stat and seven for resid. So this is going to give us our residual plot. Zoom nine I have a box plot here. This is actually a box plot of the residuals. I need to remove it. Off. Okay, zoom nine again. All right, and there's our residual plot. And you can see it's it's pretty decent um, random scatter about this um, line, the zero line here. All right, there appears to be an equal amount above and below. All right, but the A problem asks us to look at a stem plot of the residuals. Instead of looking at the stem plot, I'm going to look at a um, histogram. So coming back to my calculator, I'm going to choose histogram. So now we can see a histogram of our residuals. Zoom nine. Well you can see this this histogram is pretty strong right skew. So it does not necessarily appear that our um, our distribution is necessarily normal. That looks like a pretty decent deviation from normality. Now I'm going to look at a box plot of the data. Going to select box plot, zoom 9. And there's the box plot. Also backing up the right skew, you can see that um, the median is much closer to the minimum value than it is to the maximum and we have two outliers. So um, we have some doubts that the residuals are, are normally distributed. 14.12a. Are there outliers or signs of strong departure from normality? Yes. The residuals contain two outliers and they are right skewed. That is the residuals are right skewed. Okay, that's A part. B, what other assumptions or conditions are required for using inference for regression of these data? Well, we had Many we had a, a few conditions for inference. Number one, independent that is are the observations independent of one another? We can assume that, that these babies were, um, are independent of each other. That is, we didn't pop one baby on the foot with a rubber band on day one and then pop him again on day three and pop him again on day five and measure him three different times. We can assume these babies are independent of each other. Another call, um, 
caution I would think for independence here are do we have them around each other? One would assume one screaming infant would possibly influence another screaming infant. So um, we would assume that they're conducted their experiment with um, with with some care. So independent, um, it is reasonable to assume. observations are independent in this case. Okay. Number two, linear. Well, um, we looked at the initial data and it did appear to have a linear form and also looking at the residual plots, it seemed like the scatter was, was um, fairly random about the y equals zero line. So both original data, the original data was roughly linear and residual plot the residual plot showed random scatter about the zero line. Indicate linearity. Okay. All right. Next. standard deviation of the response about the true line is the same everywhere. That is, um, the spread is consistent. Okay. Back to our residual plot. Back to our residual plot, X list, ZL1, and then we're going to pick 7 for residual. And then I'm selecting my scatter plot, zoom 9. It looks like this, in, in the beginning, perhaps the spread's a little bit tighter. Perhaps as we move in this area, it gets to be a little bit more wide and then perhaps a little tighter. But I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that this, you know, the, the spread is reasonably reasonably consistent. Residual plot shows reasonable consistency with spread. Lastly, um, this refers to question A, okay, that is normal. And we already answered that in question A. No, we, we have serious doubts. We have reservations. C, part A. We have reservations, but we're going to proceed with caution. Proceed with caution. Okay, so those are our um, four conditions we'll check. Independent, linear, consistent, standard deviation, and um, normal, that is, a, um, are the residuals approximately normal? C. We will omit part C and part D. That concludes problem 14.12.